Hi, in this chapter we're going to talk about earthquakes and volcanoes. Earthquakes, volcanism, Pacific Northwest connections, mainly because uh, that's where we see a lot of the volcanism in the United States. So, we have uh, different orders of relief. Um, you know, huge continental platforms and ocean basins, and the movement of those that we talked about before, and then kind of get into individual level features. Relief is the vertical elevation differences in the landscape. And we'll talk about some of the changes behind those. Uh, we have different topographic regions. Um, you know, most of us are familiar with the center of the U.S., or the central part of the United States, relatively flat. We get a lot of our you know, tornadoes there as a result. Um, you know, as, as a result. But you know, we have mountains. Local relief more than 600 meters, or about 2,000 feet. So we do have a good amount of that in eastern part of the United States, and especially Virginia. So you can see the distribution of the Earth's surface elevations above and below you know, sea level, ocean trenches, all the way up to you know, 30,000 feet. <coughs> you know, almost, about 29,030 feet. So we have crustal formation processes, we have content, continental shields and what we call you know, cratons which are crystalline nucleus of each continent. They're extremely old. Uh, some is older than 2 billion years. And then we've got terrains, which are fragments of those. In the Pacific Northwest and Alaska, we have these exotic terrains brought about by glaciers or other processes. We have folding and faulting. I used the term fault before, which is the breaking of a rock. A fault is a, basically a break in a rock on which we have movement on both sides. Yeah, and then warping is the the gentle you know gentle de deformation of it. So typically rock strata these layers break under stress and we have a normal fault, which is when tensional forces pull rocks apart, kind of like divergent reverse upward and then strike slip across, kind of like you transform plate boundaries. So we can see you know the different warping. We've got domes and basins as a result because you can see the vegetation and whatnot grows on top of it compared to these different strata here. So we've got our dome, we've got our basin here. So, and we can see a good example of this out in South Dakota, um, out near Rapid City, Badlands National Park, and this is over where uh, Mount Rushmore is. So we have the different stresses that we have. We have tension, compression, and shear. Uh, and you can see the different applications of these. We have folded rocks. And this is in you know, Iran and the uh, Middle East. Uh, we have a, a, a sunken layer here. This is the Red Sea right here. Uh, and I believe this is looking, looking south from, this is the Sinai Peninsula right here. And so you can see, you know, you can see the scale on this here. And this is Taken, obviously taken from space. We have orogenesis, which is mountain building. So we have types of orogenies, which is an ocean plate versus continental plate, ocean plate when two ocean plates you know, uh, come in contact with each other, and then continental plate versus continental plate, which we talked about with the Himalayan mountains, you know, the thrusting, the overthrusting, faulting, uplifting. So these are just the different types of collisions that we have. Uh, typically, you know, continental uh, crust is going to be less dense than oceanic crust, so it's going to be, this term is called subducted underneath, and then this is going to melt, and this melting is going to take on lava. So a lot of times, say the Juan de Fuca plate, we have the Cascade Mountains. These are volcanoes as a result of the Juan de Fuca plate being subducted underneath the North American plate, and we have lava that comes up and it's in Mount Lassen in northern uh, northern California in the 1900s. Mount St. Helens in 19, uh, 1980. Uh, a number of other volcanoes extinct and active. So we can see oceanic versus oceanic. We have this uh, island arc. That's what the Aleutian Islands in Alaska are. Continental versus continental. And the mountain, mountain building never really stops. So you can see these mountains along the, the western cascades here. This is in Oregon. And a number of these. We have earthquakes. 
And basically, earthquakes are tectonic in nature, uh, related to tectonic processes. Basically, when rock accumulates too much stress and it breaks, the release of that energy is an earthquake. So some terms we have. You hear, hear the term focus, uh, an epicenter. Epicenter is the point on the Earth directly above the focus where it occurs. It might occur really shallow, you know, within miles or you know, 40 or 50 miles deep. And then we're measured using something called the Richter scale. Richter, Richter scale typically is a quantitative measurement based on energy. Mercalli scale is more qualitative. So you can see the examples of the Mercalli scales, which are relative. And I believe this is the Richter scale, which is logarithmic. Okay. Forecasting earthquakes is very difficult to do. Very difficult. Okay. There's different faults, but we don't know how much stress is on those because when we talk about how much you know, how much energy is backing up and how quickly these move, we it, it's hard to tell. We can look at things called seismic gaps. You know, these are areas where we haven't seen large movement in a number of years, but those are those are extremely difficult to tell. This occurred February 28, 2001. Uh, this was an earthquake here down near Olympia, Washington. I know in Virginia we had one in 2011. And that was nowhere near a plate boundary. So you can see, you can see those near plate boundaries, and other ones outside of plate boundaries. This is about 30 miles deep. This had a magnitude of 6.8. Um, since I said it was logarithmic, I think it was either 10 or 100 times larger than one that occurred in Virginia. So these are you know, very big compared to the one that we saw in Virginia in 2000. I think it was 11. So we can see areas of ground failure, especially with this Nisqually earthquake in 2001, places that were damaged. This is where we get into this human-environment interaction, where we have artificial landfills, and then the different media. So if we have a landfill and we have sand, some of the problems that occur is that it's not very dense, so it takes longer for those waves to travel through the landfill and the sand and the, the not dense areas, at which time, if it takes longer, it can do more damage. So you can see the seismic hazard maps you know, in Seattle. And these are some select earthquakes uh, in the Pacific Northwest since uh, 1872. And then they trigger you know, landslides and you know, liquefaction and all these other things here. These are high-risk areas in the United States. I said before, Charleston, South Carolina. There's one here, this is called the New Madrid Fault Zone. They had 8.0 earthquakes in the 1800s. Boston, a little bit, okay? But you can see our area here in Virginia here, not a lot. So that earthquake was a bit of an anomaly. We also have volcanoes different types of volcanoes, and I'm not going to go through these there, but I, I did use the term caldera, large composite volcano that's a, a, that has collapsed on itself. And this is an example of, this is Crater Lake in Oregon. I've been here before. And then you can see a little volcano inside of the big volcano. And like I said before, this is the deepest lake in the United States. It's about 1,950 feet or so. Okay. But a lot of your volcanic activity is going to occur along subduction zones, some along spreading centers. Okay. There are volcanoes in Iceland in 2011. Icelandic uh, volcanoes redirected a lot of the transatlantic air flights uh, during that summer. And then we also have some volcanic activity in hot spots such as Hawaii. We have explosive, effusive eruptions. The ones in Hawaii are generally effusive. And you can see how they are at spreading centers and hot spots. And we have py pyroclastic flows in lahars, uh, superheated ash. Okay. And, it, and it's still a problem. You know, it's definitely a problem. Um, I'll show you a, a really neat example here. Yeah, and these happen everywhere in the United States. Okay, or throughout the world. But we're going to look at this area right here. 
this is, we have a plate here called the Caribbean plate. Okay, you can't see it here, but I'm going to zoom into this area here called Montserrat. Okay, this is a British island right here. And when I was in high school and college, this was erupting. But if I can click on the satellite image here, you can see what's going on in the southern part here. Okay, this has been going on for about 20 years. Okay, and you can see this is called Soufrier Hills. But the southern half of this island was, um, was evacuated. But this has happened in last 20 years. The deadliest volcano in the 20th century occurred in Martinique. Mount Pele. Okay, this was the deadliest volcano in 1902. Okay, so this was the deadliest volcano. So we do still have some active volcanoes here in the in the Caribbean here. Okay, you go to Bahamas, you go to Turks and Caicos, they're extremely flat, formed another way. You go to this island arc right here, formed in an entirely different way, this orogenesis that we've talked about. So you can see volcanoes. You can see the examples that I'm showing right here are some of the Azores, Iceland that I've talked about before. You can see a number of volcanoes around. And these, are, these have the different types of volcanoes shield volcanoes. Uh, this is Mount Rainier in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it's a minor eruptions in the 1700s, but that's the next next big one here. So you can see some of the, the historic horrors that have occurred in the past, but just imagine what's going to happen if this thing flash melts. Where is it going to go? Down, wherever down is, out to Puget Sound, which is at sea level. So this flash melting. So Pacific Northwest is really susceptible to these. There are some active volcanoes in Northern California. Mount Lassen was one of them that erupted about 100 years ago. And that's part of this zone right up here. Okay. And so these are some of the potentially active volcanoes in the Western United States. These are them in the last 4,000 years, which is literally a snap, you know, in, in geologic time scale. And you can just see some of these here. Uh, this is Mount St. Helens, you know, occurred more than 1980, 38 years ago. And you can see what it looks like now. This is a satellite image from 1980, so you can actually see the, you know, the echo from it. And then pushing all that pyroclastic material into the air and ash, and see all the states that it affected seven hours later. This is what it looked like before. This is kind of what it looked like after. And this is starting to, you can start to see what it looks like. These are some before and after pictures. I've been there before. I don't think any of these pictures are mine. But this is some satellite imagery. And you can see the areas that it affected. And this is a relatively small one, too. So this is Mount St. Helens. It's in the state of Washington. Oh, yeah, this is me. Okay. And I was here in the early 2000s. And you can see 20 years later, there's nothing above your waist. And so you can see this whole area. It was obliterated. And you can see, you know, the relative size of these. Uh, Novarupta. Um, I'm not sure where this one was, but you can see how much bigger it is than Mount St. Helens. Pinatubo in 1991. Um, some of these are in really remote areas, such as um, Indonesia. Redoubt. This is in Alaska, so it didn't affect a lot of people. Augustine, which I believe is in Alaska. Okay, Novarupta is in Alaska. So you can see some of these are what we call natural hazards here that affect lots of people. Some of these don't affect a lot of people. 
And then you can see Mount Mazama, Oregon. You can see how much it ejected into the atmosphere. This is the one that helped form Crater Lake about, what, 7,000 years ago, compared to Mount St. Helens in 1980. Tambora, which was a big one, caused what we call the year without a summer. And another larger one was called Krakatoa in 1883. So you can see how big some of these larger earth uh, volcanoes are compared to Mount St. Helens. Pele in Martinique killed 30,000 people, but it was on that relatively small island. And then just a couple other maps. This was the one in Iceland in, I'm not going to try to pronounce this, in 2011. And then the effects of these. So a lot on volcanoes. And that's about it.